headlight rackets. Many could say that these rackets have been forgotten long time ago in the badminton world. With most of the new successful series such as the Voltric Astrop series being head heavy, it seems to prove that in the badminton world people seem to prefer head heavy balances. Why did people prefer head heavy rackets for so long? In the past of four, headlight rackets seems to have this trend where they're less durable, less powerful and have kind of like a less solid feel than head heavy rackets typically. Well, not gonna lie, when I first tried out the Nano Flare, I was kind of skeptical about it because I did have some kind of mediocre to bad experiences with headlight rackets in the past before. In fact, I went into trying the Nano Flare thinking, oh, the Nano Flare is not gonna be as good as the Astro series, which I do really, really love. But I urge you to try this racket out with an open mind and watch this video with a clear kind of slate because I do think after you see this, you're gonna have a different perspective on headlight rackets. So, let me just give you a brief overview of this racket. This Nanoflare 800 is the 3U G4 edition. 3U is slightly heavier than 4U, so for players that have a slightly weaker technique or they just want a lighter racket, best to go with the 4U option. But if you want a bit more power and a bit more kind of solidity, then 3U feels a bit better. G4 is a slightly larger grip size compared to G5, which I typically use. A lot of people actually prefer G5 because if you want a bigger grip, then you could just grip it up thicker. But if you want to go thinner, you can't exactly go thinner with it already thick grip. I don't want to waste your time talking about every single feature of this racket because, not gonna lie, most of the rackets nowadays, they are pretty similar. But there's certain characteristics that actually differentiate one racket to another. So there's three main points about this Nanoflare 800 that is very, very different compared to the other series. The Nanoflare 800 basically has all of the new features that the previous new rackets already have, such as the Astrox 99, Astrox ATA, they have the new built-in T-joints, they have Nanometric, and it's just a really, really premium racket. With this racket, like I said, there is three main points that's new about it. The first is the new material, the second is the new balance, and the third is the new shape. So, this racket sports the Tereka M40X material, which was also present on the Nanoflare 700. This racket material is very, very new, so not many rackets actually have this. I think these are actually the only two rackets that sport this material. So basically in badminton racket graphite, there is two properties that are very, very kind of favorable. So you have the high modulus side and also the high tensile side. So high modulus is basically per kind of little area of it, it can take a lot of stress. So it kind of directly relates to the stiffness of it and the amount of force it can exert. And the high tensile side is how much force it takes before it breaks. So with rackets in the past where materials aren't as developed, basically you kind of, for example, have a racket that have one side, the high tensile side, but kind of lack down on the high modulus side. Or you can just have a racket with really high modulus, but really bad high tensile properties. However, with this M40X material, you're able to kind of combine the two together and get the best of both worlds. The difference in the amount of M40X used in the Nanoflare 800 and the Nanoflare 700 is that on the 800, there is more of it. The actual area that is used is around here. So it's close to the T-joint, which allows for stability, while still allowing the top of the frame to flex a bit so you get that snap. So with a Nanoflare 800, it reaches up slightly higher to compensate for the fact that this frame is indeed thinner and also smaller. This in turn also increases the durability. Let's skip the jargon and kind of apply it a bit to the badminton terms. What I mean by that is a lot of people complain about the solidity of headlight rackets in the past before. They say, oh, the smash doesn't have that kind of punch to it, or it just feels too light so you're not able to get enough power. So with this new material, the high modulus properties allow the solid punch that you'd get on like the Astro series, which is really, really cool. And surprisingly, on this very, very thin and headlight racket, 
you can string this up to 29 pounds of tension and that is ridiculous and that directly just shows how good the high tensile properties are because with most other racket series inside the Yonex it doesn't even go that high apart from like the Astrox series and the Voltric series which are really really dense and strong rackets and like I said in the beginning of the video headlight rackets have kind of disappeared for quite a long time people seem to like head heavy balances more because of the three things that I mentioned and with the release of the new material before they're able to actually create a headlight racket that is actually able to fulfill people's needs with power and also speed headlight rackets are more suited towards players that enjoy doubles especially front court domination although you can get quite a lot of speed in the back court I do think it's better for the forecourt in my opinion and experiences I think for men's singles this racket doesn't have the stability as much as like the Astro series does however I do think for women's doubles this racket is perfectly fine for it and the most obvious thing that you'll notice about this racket as soon as you pick it up is the shape the shape of the frame is extremely thin on all aspects the side profile and the front profile this racket sports the compact frame that you see on the Z Force 2 and other rackets like that and although it takes a bit more extra time to get used to and a kind of more advanced technique to actually hit the sweet spot consistently I do think it really pays off because you get more of a solid feel and it swings through the air much faster also for people that play badminton quite a long time you know the badminton swing isn't simply like a forward motion it consists of turning so the side profile has to be aerodynamic as well so a lot of people think headlight rackets just lack power completely and you're not able to smash it does take time to get used to this racket that is quite a massive learning curve especially when you're coming from head heavy balances however i think once you've got the timing right and you hit the sweet spot you'll easily be able to get the shuttle down really really fast before on this racket i had the aerobite boost strung at 29 pounds of tension Unfortunately, I actually broke it on the first day, so I'm not actually able to show you guys. Right now, I have the BG80 string by Yonex, strung at 28 pounds of tension. It feels really crisp, it's got good power, and it's got good control. With the Aerobite Boost, I haven't tested it fully enough to give like a solid opinion. However, from the first session of testing it, I do prefer it over the Aerobite. It just feels like it's got a bit more kind of snap to it. The normal Aerobite is a really good string, however, it just feels a little bit too soft for my liking. The Aerobite Boost has kind of like a harder feel, so you can get a bit more control. As some of you guys might actually know, early last year, I injured my shoulder in badminton pretty bad. I was out from sport for like four or five months, and to this day, it's still not recovered 100%. However, I'm still getting treatment for it and it is improving slightly. So normally I use the Astrox AT8D and the Astrox AT8S which are my favourite rackets and however with those rackets that I can get loads of power and speed from, I do think there's a slight limit to it and what I mean by that is I feel like my shoulder isn't able to keep up with the actual head heavy balance of it sometimes and I'm not able to unlock the full potential of the racket. However, with the headlight balance it really 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 does help my shoulder. I'm able to hit powerful shots without much effort and much strain on my shoulder and I'm able to actually maneuver this much faster which means that I'm able to cut out shots much earlier and defend a bit better without straining my shoulder at all. For me this is like a personal thing because not everyone has a shoulder injury and this racket does really benefit me in that way. Thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Please have a look in the description below. I've linked a couple of things for you to check out. First I've linked the Tereka M40X article straight from their website. Secondly, I've linked some Yonex articles about the new Nano Flares to give you a bit more information on it. And third of all, you guys will like this. I've actually made some free wallpapers for you guys to use. All you guys got to do is just click on the link and just download it. Please show your support by following my Instagram at Ken underscore poison. It really means a lot. So now just to finish off the video, I'm just going to play some bonus matches that I played with Fifi just to showcase the speed of this racket because it's just so satisfying to play with. And the last point, I'm actually making a Nano Flare 700 video right now. So if you guys want to see that fast, smash that like button.